Now, we're talking about the Abwazi Power Enclave, which produces 730 megawatts of Ghana's electricity and other state installation because it risks being wiped out by the sea. We'll tell you why. Because the Ghana Meteorological and Hydrological Authority has issued a warning which says that this devastation will be catastrophic if immediate protection and protective measures are not being taken to protect some of these facilities. There's more in this report by Adubi Asare. The Ghana Hydrological Authority says it has now become urgent for the country to protect the threatened institutions or lose them. So along our coastal stretch, we have different uh, or varying levels of vulnerability. We have varying levels of vulnerability. So at one end, we are losing as much as uh, 1.3 meter um, per, uh, per year to the, to the coast. They include the St. Augustine's College, the University of Cape Coast, the Cape Coast Nursing and Midwifery College. Also under threat is the Accra, Cape Coast and Cape Coast Takrati stretch of the N1 Highway, all in the central region. The Akul is in, in Cape Coast and uh, we have uh, on the Cape Coast Takrati Road very, very much at risk. We have uh, St. Augustine's College. If any of you went to St. Augustine's, I have to pray that we can do this work very quickly. Otherwise, in a couple of years' time, St. Augustine's will disappear from the surface of the earth. Um, <laughs> we have Cape Coast Central Hospital nearby as well. In the western region, the Abuazi Power Enclave, where the Takrati Power Plant and the Twin Energy Station are located, will all be affected. We have a Abuazi Enclave where the, uh, we have a power plant that is uh, at risk. You know, the, uh, again, the um, sea is very close to um, the, the power plant. In the greater Accra region, Dansuman, Ningo Pram Pram, the Dinu Aflao Highway, as well as some communities in the Volta region all face the threat. So that is uh, Dansuman, and you will see, you know, these are recent photos um, showing uh, properties being lost. You know, uh, Dansuman particularly, the, the sea is very close to the road. Um, and if nothing is done shortly, we will lose the road um, to the sea, along with all the houses um, sitting next to the road. Some work is already underway to protect threatened communities. But the Hydrological Authority says the country will have to find 200 million U.S. dollars to build coastal defense systems to avert a possible destruction of these communities. Adobia Asari for Joy News, Accra. Well, Ivy Sechaji joins us live from Keta. Ivy, we know that a community in the Volta region, which has had to do with the flooding caused by the sea in recent times, is Keta. Tell us what the situation in your area is currently. Uh, well, most of the communities in the around the coastal areas have been affected greatly. Uh, we are talking about Uveme. Uh, at least almost half of the place is washed away. Uh, also, Bokobo, uh, that's in the Anglogad district, uh, is almost gone uh, to the sea. And most of the places in, in these areas, Anglogad district, uh, Heta uh, district, and uh, Kent to South, all these places, uh, most of the communities have been lost to the sea. And now, businesses have been affected, especially fishing activities have been affected uh, in those areas. I am currently uh, at Keta, uh, where the Villa Amon uh, and Aboriginal hotels are located. And when you come to these areas, you realize that the sea, the tidal wave is really, really affected the, the buildings there, especially some of the uh, beach resorts in that area. Uh, properties have been affected and also fishing activities uh, mm -hmm. is, is not doing very well. Residents are asking government, uh, they've been asking this for, for years now uh, to immediately uh, start the construction of uh, sea defense walls uh, to protect the coast right from uh, these areas that's from Anyani, Popobo, Kuveme. 
to uh, get to south so that uh, they don't experience these issues again. Uh, but according to residents, they are not sure this will be done because if this is not done as early as possible, uh, trust me, most of the places will be destroyed. Uh, the hotels in these areas will be destroyed because it has already started and most people have lost their properties into the sea. Uh, we spoke with some of the residents this morning around the beach uh, and they had this to say. Yeah, we are really at risk here along the coast and our fears are very high because in the past two, three years, the way the tidal waves and the sea erosion is uh, eroding portions of the land is becoming alarming. Uh, if nothing is done about it, we need to lose greater portion of the coastal lands and the coastal infrastructure. What do you suggest, Mr. I suggest that a comprehensive sea defense project be done between government to Aplau area. You know, the areas affected uh, are from Uveme Kokobo, Anyanui, Jita, Atiteti, and to Keta, to now uh, Salakopo, Agaveji, Adina area. So it's a, a long stretch of coastal uh, land that is suffering from the coastal uh, erosion. And the a lot of property has been lost so far. And then uh, the fish are uh, it really affects them with their catches. And then uh, most of the time, you know, um, when it erodes into the community, you realize that uh, there are a um, lot of dumping sites in the community. And this thing goes back into the, uh, into the sea. And then they ended up uh, catching them as fish. So the catch normally goes down when uh, these things happen. So, yes, it affects the fish and fish. And then the Well, also joining us is Deputy Executive Director of Arocha Ghana, Daryl Bonzu. Thank you for your time here on Newsdex. This is some disturbing news, I guess, for you. Yes, good morning, um, Fustin, and uh, thank you for having uh, me. Um, yes, I think it's very disturbing to hear what is happening, but I believe also that, I mean, these things, we have already foreseen that they were going to happen, because as you know, um, the impact and the vulnerabilities that communities are exposed to as a result of climate change is being felt all around the world. And, and particularly the risks associated with the increasing sea level rising is, is even, even more um, at hand. And I think that hearing about this, I am not really surprised. So you see, Ghana has got roughly over 500 kilometer a coastal um, line. And if you look at the way and manner we are managing this, been quite ad hoc. We've not really had a deliberate, um, I would say, management system in place to ensure that we secure the coastal line. And so you are likely to have some of these um, wrecks that um, even infrastructure, key infrastructure for the state and the people of Ghana is being exposed to. So until we really take action to start seeing our coastal areas as really fundamental, because it's only about communities that are being exposed. And, and as you heard, Honorable and some of uh, Okuja speak on the issue. It, it's really imminent that we really start um, taking steps to protect our coastal areas. We, we can't run away from it now. Yeah. You've been championing um, community and climate change for a long time. Isn't this the climate simply fighting back because of how bad we have treated it? Yes. I mean, some processes, I mean, some processes, um, have already been initiated as a result of climate change and it's very difficult to really hold them back. So we really need to I mean, start adapting as a, as a nation to some of these risks. I mean, it's already happening. There's very little we can do apart from adapting and also ensuring that we have in place some solutions. I mean, there's been solutions you see in certain areas that are talking about sea defense walls and all of that. They, we have some other solutions have been on securing our coastal vegetation like the mangroves. All of these things are very, very important. But I think what is even more needed now is for Ghana to really take adaptation more seriously and see how we can protect communities that are dotting some of these coastal areas. Because, I mean, now the risk is here. We might as well get used to it that it's going to keep coming every year. 
I mean, research shows that every year we are losing about two meters of our coastal um, area to, to, to the sea level, and the sea is claiming two meters of our coastal area. So it means that it's going to get worse over the years, and we need to start preparing for it. So I think, for me, it's a wake-up call that if we are seeing state infrastructure, key infrastructure being affected, communities have already been affected for a long time, communities in the area, hotel facilities and all of that have been um, washed away and all of that. Now it is getting to a state. Maybe that will, will, will give all of us a, a wake-up um, call for us to start really acting on behalf of not just the state infrastructure, but also on behalf of community because this is an opportunity. And I know the Environmental Protection Agency is taking some steps to adaptation measures to, to help address this. But I think we need far-reaching um, effort and also intervention that maybe we have on the ground now. Suggest to us what some of what are some of these far-reaching efforts that government can put in place because we know that this is here to stay. We know that moving forward would have to be extremely cautious. But then, for residents and people along this coastal lines who would be affected, what do you suggest government do moving forward? Yes, I think for me, what I want to propose is that, and I think a bit of it is, is happening already is that we really need to pay attention to re-engineering our coastal communities and all of that, taking into consideration some of the nature-based solutions like the mangroves, activities like sand winning. There needs to be a, a very concerted national effort to really start protecting our, our seashores and our, our coastal areas against sand winning activities, which already exposes our coastal areas so much that any intervention put in place is into successful. So we really need to re-engineer our coastal area. We need to re-engineer how weight from the inland area goes to also erode the coastal areas and all of that. And even building infrastructure along the coast and some of the development in the oil and gas sector all spreading around the coastal areas. You know, by the petroleum hub in the mine area within very prime coastal and mangrove ecosystems and all that, we really need to put in a lot of planning and, and a lot of engineering to start, um, I mean, securing our coastal, coastal areas. Otherwise, and when the sea really rises so much, well, we are all going to be found wanting. Mm. Thank you for Thank joining you so us much, here Christina. on Thank News you. Next Arrow.